are thankful that the Lord gave us a day that we can lift our own voices. We in our right mind. We're not confused. We can chew our food. We can walk on our legs. We can breathe the air. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't do another thing, you already did way too much. We want to acknowledge you on this first Sunday. Our Lord, our God, our King. Uh, what an awesome, awesome spirit in the house. You know, I loved, you know, how we honored our seniors today. And there's many more up here, but, you know, I feel comfortable when I'm around seniors. Now that I'm one. <laughs> That's good, amen, to see everybody. And, and they did not know they was getting that award. So just to celebrate our seniors once again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many know we serve a mighty God? No, for real, how many know we serve a mighty God? We got the Hubble telescopes. We got all Mars rovers and moon crab, amen. And they said we discovered another galaxy. Well, it was already there. God just let us see what, what we need to see because he's so big and so vast. And, and that's the kind of God, the God that made everything. And then said, I'm going to choose human beings to partner with me to get it done. So he chose you to get it done. And you know how we are. Sometimes we don't feel like doing it. But he chose us. Even the angels are amazed how God looks at us. So I want us to make a conscious effort to love one another. No, I want you to love one another, talk to one another, and I want you to drop all the little small things that somebody has done that offended you and let water be up under a bridge. Because let me tell you something, it's so small, you know it ain't worth, amen, going to that place with it. So let us love one another. You know why? Because we serve a risen God. He's not dead, he is alive. See, somebody knows that the name of the Lord is the strong tower, where the righteous run in and are saved. Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we're going to trust in the name of the Lord. I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 37, verses 23 to 26. We'll be coming from the New King James Version this morning. Psalms 37, starting in verse 23. When you have that, read it for a doctor. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. I want to continue the message from two weeks, last week and today, entitled, Every Little Step You Take. Every little step you take. Can you bow your heads in prayer? Father, as we gather to this part, Father, of the service where the priest's word will be preached, we ask, Father, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me, guide me, order me in the way I need to go. That I articulate this message, God, very clearly, that everybody understands exactly what I'm saying. Father, that the word, oh God, that it can be so vast and so big, oh God, be reduced down to a first grader level that can understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you deliver some, save some. I pray, God, those that are streaming right now, even those that are watching by TV, arrest them, oh God, into the love, oh God, and the mercy that you have for them. I pray, oh God, that our online family outgrow our sitting down family. We think in the name of Jesus. Can the church say amen? amen. Now, I know y'all don't talk to each other a few times already this morning, but I want you to look around one more time and say, you look good on this Sunday morning. 
You look good on this Sunday morning. Now act like it, act like you mean it, okay? Act like you really mean it. <laughs> Glory, you may have your seat in the house of God. As you walk with him, he will give you a new testimony. As you walk with him, you'll find out the magnitude of your relationship. You begin to find out things that you didn't know about him before. You begin to find out that he will be your best friend. You begin to find out he will hold you through tough times. You begin to find out that he will comfort you at 3 o'clock in the morning. He will sit beside you, chat with you about your life. He going to talk to you about your childhood. He going to talk to you about your burdens. Uh, he will minister to you, and you will find out that he will lead you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Because every little step you take brings you closer to his purpose. Every little step you take you begin to reap another benefit in the Lord. Every little step you take gets you further than who you used to be. Aren't you glad, amen, that that's one benefit, that I am not the person I used to be? I didn't even like me. Thank the Lord that you delivered me. See, you will never be fulfilled until you understand what God made you for. Because you're going to be looking to try to fill a void that only God knows what that is. And when you find the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you will taste and see that he's better than anything that you have ever had in your life. I know you've been putting him on reserve and say, when I get older, I'm going to come on into the house. But, but you don't decide that. It is the Holy Spirit that decides today is your day. You can decide all you want to and be distracted by Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> you can be distracted by Krispy Kreme bell ringing. But when you understand that if the Lord had not been on my side, where in the world would I be? And you, we can answer that question. Be lost. We would be lost. So you won't know who you are until you understand what God has made you to do. You will only walk around confused thinking there's more in life. And that's true. Because there is more to life. Because Psalm 37, 4 says, delight thyself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, that's very interesting because, see, sometimes you think it's your desire. It's not your desire. God put that desire in you so that you can desire to have it. And he says, I'm going to lead you to that desire. Because when you walk with God, God can trust you with your choices. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and the Lord delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. That's a word for somebody. I said, though you fall, not if. You fall, when you fall, you shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord uphold you with his hands. Now, if the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, if the steps of a good man are guided by the Lord, if the steps of a good man are directed by the Lord, then that means whatever you go through, good or bad, your steps were already planned. By him. Prearranged by him. That does not mean, amen, that, you know, that it's already done laid out and, what, you know, you don't have no choice. That means God has already have looked down the line, saw your birth date, saw the middle of your life, and then saw the end, knew the decisions you were going to make, knew what direction you are going to go in. So he just came back and summed it up. I have ordered your steps. That, that wasn't you. That was me that ordered your steps. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to establish wherever you go. Because everything in your life has been carefully arranged 
by a God who is a composer of the affairs of your life and the events that take place in your life. And some of the things you're going through right now may be frightening because we have that uncertainty about it. I just don't know what's going to happen. I'm, and I'm a little fearful what's going to happen in 2024 and, and going down the pike. But you don't have to be afraid because God said, trust in me. Trust in me. Now, I know, I mean, that's easier said than done, but he wants you to lean on him because when you learn how to lean on him, he knows how to comfort you in the way that you need to be comforted. See, sometimes we think we need to be comforted by people, but because they're the closest to us, but sometimes people can't cut it. They can't do what the Lord can do because the Lord lives inside of you and they know how to touch what needs to be touched. He knows how to caress what needs to be caressed. He knows what to say when it's time to be said. He said, I am more important to you than a mother and I'm closer to you than a brother or sister. So when you get in trouble, you don't run from God, you run to him. And that's why some of us can't sleep. Because we got too much going on in our head. And so we need pills and potions to help us sleep. But all that is an anxiety. That's all that is. It's all this old school anxiety. Because you don't know what's going to happen. But I stand before you this morning as a messenger of God to tell you, Satan has not snatched the steering wheel from God. Amen. And running your life to hell he is a liar, and you didn't know he's a liar. If the devil ever speaks to you, just know right now he's going to be lying to you because the truth is not in him, and you need to know that. So stop quoting him because he's quoting a lie. I got to encourage somebody because you do have some demonic forces around you trying to influence you to take over your life. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't let the devil, amen, fool you and trick you. Do not, amen, let your weakness or your carnality fool you. We all have them. We all have these areas in our, don't let it fool you now, because though he fall, the Lord shall uplift you with his holy hand. So understand, your life is not chaotically put together. And you are not as confused as you think you are. It is God that has established your steps. You see, the reason that certain things have happened to you in this stage of your life is because God ordered it at this stage. The reason why things are happening to you at this age of your life, because God ordered it. It couldn't happen in 2022, and it couldn't happen in 2023. It was the perfect time that he put that desire inside of you to do what you're doing right now. Some of you wouldn't even be here if he didn't put that desire down into you. You didn't decide it. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So understand, it was not a mistake. It was not an accident. And I want you to recognize that God is in complete control. How do I know that? Because he knows exactly where you are. He knows what happened to you. He knows who walked out and left you. He knows who betrayed you. He knows who have rejected you. He knows who have molested you. He knows who have raped you. He knows where you are. He knows about your bills. He knows about your degrees. He knows you dropped out of school. He knows what you did. He knows, amen, the health of your child. He knows the condition of your neighborhood. He knows exactly where you are. It is a reason that you are in this place this morning. You didn't stumble up in here. It was no accident. So stop thinking that things are a coincidence. They are no coincidence. You have been ordered by the Lord, amen, for such a time as this because now he's going to start setting up the pieces where you can see the next move and not stumble into it because when you stumble in something, you don't know how you got there so you can't trace it. I don't want to know that. I want to know how did I get here so I can repeat it. Mm. Some people say, uh, I guess I go to church today. No. <laughs> I guess I get saved. 
No. I guess I moved to Charlotte next month. No. Some, look at somebody and say, that's not how it works. <laughs> the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And then the Lord comes back and says, and I delight. But Lord, don't you know I'm had some missteps, Lord? You know that I made a fool of myself, Lord. You know I went over there and did some crazy stuff. I said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and I have delighted in it. So don't let the devil fool you. I didn't say that was the perfect will. All I said, I'm going to get you back on the perfect will. Look at somebody says it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. I'm going to get back where I'm supposed to be. Somebody need to be praying right now because somebody don't feel they can get back on the road, but yes, you can get it back on the road. God upholdeth thee. Yes. God gets happy when you stay on the steps. The devil says, oh, he's not going to stay there because it's not good for him. He's praising God on the steps. And the Bible, when it comes back, says, he's not delighting on the steps. He's delighting in me <laughs> while he's on the steps. And it's a big difference eh, when I'm delighting him while I'm going through some things because I know it's temporary. And when I know it's temporary, I know it's a matter of time before I'm out. I need some help because... Some of y'all wait for the punchline. The punchline was five minutes ago. Because, see, that's the thing, get this, that stays the same. The steps change every day, but the Lord your God never changes. Oh, my God. You see, some people shout about the wrong things. They shout about, hey, man, what's going to change tomorrow? Let me go further. See, they want to shout about a person that will get up and leave you by tomorrow morning. They all happy tonight, but tomorrow morning they gone. But you need to shout about something that will never change. Ne oh, yes. He never changed. You need to shout about God is in my life. Thank you, Jesus. It was a point where you wasn't in my life. And, and, and I didn't know that you were not in my life. But I, once I recognize you in my life, I want to praise you. Somebody going to leave in the morning. Hey, man, why are you, why are you praising him about that? <laughs> you need to shout about Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He will be with you when you're up, be with you when you're down. He will be with you no matter what level you're on, no matter what steps you take. The Lord is with you every step of the way. Now, can I shift a little gear because I just need to go right here because I need to get myself wound up. When the Bible starts talking about, amen, walking with God, it always talks about Enoch. The Bible says in Genesis 5, 24, Enoch walked with God and was not. Can you all just say, help me a little bit? I want to show you something. So let me say it again. Enoch walked with God and was not. Well, when Enoch first met God, he was. But as he walked with him, God Almighty, he became a was not. As you walk with God, amen, you will change from glory to glory, from faith to faith. See, that's where people miss it because they say, once I get right, I'm going to get saved. But when, but when you first met God, you are. But when you walk with him, you are or was not. Okay, I don't think you're with me. So let me go ahead and prove what I'm talking about through Scripture. When Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well, uh, she was an adulterer. Come on, somebody. But as she continued to walk with God, she walked out from under her adultery and became an evangelist. Went down to Samaria, start telling people, come see a man. Well, the local people say, isn't this that little fast woman? That was an adulterer. Well, she was. <laughs> but she walked with God until she was not. Look at somebody. I once was. But as I walked with him, I became a was not. Somebody said, let me walk with him. Because I need to prove to somebody I was. But now I am not. Enoch walked 
with God and was not. When Enoch first walked with him, he was. But as he walked with God, he walked with him until he was not. Because every little step you take, you begin to shed a little bit of humanity and you begin to walk into some divinity. By his stripes I am healed. The natural can't receive that, but the spiritual person can. Because I ain't basing on how I'm feeling. I'm just going to walk into divinity. I'm going to keep on walking until I'm healed. Now understand, you do not take a major step every single day. You take them every so often, every so many situations, every so many tears, every so many burdens, every so many heart-wrenching, jerk, uh, tear-jerking circumstances, you take another step. Why? Because steps are expensive. And you can't take a major step every day because you have to get over a place and rest. And about time you get really, really comfortable, God stir up something. I ain't say the devil. God stir up something. And you have to move, and then you take another little step. Now, you might be on that step six months or maybe a year. But after something comes along and say move, you take another little step. Now let me tell you or show you how you know you're getting closer to the Lord. You know you're getting closer to the Lord when the things that used to worry you don't worry you anymore. You know you're getting closer to the Lord when you have peace in the middle of a storm. You know you're getting closer to the Lord when you prefer God's company over people's company. You know you're getting closer with the Lord when you run into a financial crisis and you don't lose your cool. You just say the Lord is able. He's able. I don't know how he's gonna fix it. I don't know how he's gonna put it together, but the Lord is able. You know you're getting closer to the Lord when you can praise him in the middle of a crisis and say hallelujah anyhow. I got anybody like that? <laughs> no, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to praise him anyhow because I know my God going to come through. Cause it, I don't know when and I don't know how, but I know one moment, amen, he's going to do the impossible and change my whole circumstances. So I'm going to praise him in the middle of a storm and not lose my cool. Because you, you got to understand, you already praised him. You've been praising him all the while. But the praise changed. Because you was praising him because a check came in the mail. And you was all out at the mailbox shouting. You was praising him because something good happened that day. You was praising him because what you prayed for that morning, something happened. See, you were praising him because everything was going right. But as you take another little step, you start praising him when trouble is everywhere around you. This is how you know you're getting close with the Lord. Because I was praising him because something good happened. Now I'm praising him because something bad is happening. Because I don't recognize he is closer oh, to me than he has ever been in my entire life. See, there is a praise you can get in a hospital bed. You didn't hear me. I know you didn't hear me. I said the praise because you just thought about something good that the Lord has done while a tear came over the bridge of your nose and fell on your cheek. Thank you, Jesus, amen, because you did something I wasn't even expecting you to do. There's another kind of praise when your bills are past due and the creditors are calling and the repo man's in the yard and when you should be worried, you're praising in the living room 
because though he slayed me, got him out, yet will I still trust in him. See, there's a crazy kind of craze, amen, that don't even make no sense. I'm talking about there's a praise you can't even figure out. The devil, amen, doesn't know why you are happy as you are, but you just thought about how good God is to you, and you say, thank you, Jesus. It's not working out the way I want it to work out, but I just feel in my sanctified spirit that you're going to move somewhere mighty in my life because every little step you take gets you closer to God. Enoch walked with God until he was not, and all he left, Brother Jesse, was a testimony. I mean, the man didn't leave a shoe. He didn't leave his hat. He didn't leave his coat. He just kept walking with God until he stepped into eternity. Let me tell you something. Some of the mess you're in right now, you got to learn how to walk out of it. Somebody say, I got to learn how to walk out of it. Oh, people are going to be talking to you. Hey, man, it ain't going to be make sick. Just walk on out. Just don't even explain. I'm out of here. Oh, have you ever been in a conversation right in the middle of a co Oh, I ain't going to Somebody said, I'm going to walk on out of it. If I got any help over here, I'm just going to walk right on out of this thing because it ain't making no sense to me, and, and, and you're bringing me down. I'm just going to learn how to walk out of this. Some of you are going to have to learn how to walk out of some mess. Oh, some of the birds you're in right now, you're going to have to walk out of it now. If you can't fix it, walk out. If you can't change it, walk out. Keep on walking until it doesn't matter. Keep on walking until it doesn't hurt anymore. Ooh, 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 somebody need that. Because I was hurting while I was walking. But keep on walking until you are was not. God will help us. Keep on walking, O'Neal. Let's keep on walking. Keep on walking until it makes no difference. Everything you can't fix, you're going to have to learn how to walk out of it. I want somebody to walk out of trouble this morning. Walk out of confusion. Oh, let me go deeper. Walk out of gossip. Don't argue about it. Don't get mad about it. Don't get upset about it. Don't even try to straighten it out. Look at somebody. I'm just going to walk on out of this thing. Oh, you have to come to a place where you just walk right on out of it because he's moving. And if you're going to keep up with God, you're going to have to let everything go. Why? Because there's nothing. You're trying to straighten out. Worth you missing your place in God. You see, what God had to teach me as a pastor is that people who are bitter have received bitterness. They are just not bitter for nothing. They have received bitterness. Can I just go deeper? Mm. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It didn't slip. It was there waiting for an opportunity. It was like a crouching lion waiting for its prey. It was waiting to say what it was going to say. It just needed an opportunity to say it. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, you can only get out of your mouth what's been put into your heart. Can I prove it? Because you'll be nasty and don't want to be nasty. You will be hateful and really don't want to be hateful. You will be jealous and really don't mean to be jealous. You will be a smart talking person, but really don't want to be a smart talking person. You will be yelling at your child, just yelling at them, and all of a sudden it's going to dawn on you, you sound just like your mama when she was yelling at you. Because you can only get out what has been placed in. Because you cannot withdraw one dollar that has not been deposited into your account. 
Whatever the withdrawal has to be deposited in. The Bible said in Ephesians 5 to walk in love in Christ. As Christ also have loved us. So you have to walk in love as Christ loved you. Because as you receive love, you can only give love. Can I go deeper? It's hard to be a father when you've never seen a father. Okay. It's hard to be a husband when you've never seen a husband. So you're trying to learn how to be one when it was never deposited into you. Oh, my God, what to be. So now you got a woman that's trying to look for a husband. And you was never taught how to be one, God Almighty. And you're trying to make it up as you go because it was never deposited in you. It's hard to be a mother to somebody who has never been mother. It's hard to pastor people who have never been pastored because of what basically they do is act out what has been placed in them. So you got to come in and correct stuff because what they're doing is what they have seen done. They don't mean no harm all the time. They just do what is deposited into them. So somebody comes up to you and want to make a withdrawal from you and they say, you ought to love me. But it hasn't been a deposit. And now they're trying to withdraw something out of you. And you're frustrated. And your account is out of balance. Because nobody has deposited that into you. So it creates a dilemma. Because sometimes you want to let go. But you don't know how. To let go. Sometimes you want to be nice, but you don't know how to be nice. Sometimes uh, you want to trust, but you don't know how to trust because you can't walk in something if you don't have that wealth in that area. And all of a sudden you're standing there and you know you ought to do it, but you know you really don't have it. So we must talk about it. What do you do when your account is out of balance? <laughs> Let me say it this way. What do you do when life demands something that you cannot supply? Yeah. They're asking this of me, but I don't have it. So I got to try to fake it, but it's not in me. They want me to be life at a party. That's not me. I try, but I, I can't do it. So you get frustrated at me because I don't smile. But smile was never deposited into me. Oh, I need to talk to somebody. Because you're asking something of someone that never has seen it done. But as I walk with God, God, give me back what I never had. God, I'm not. You don't hear what I'm talking about. When God allows you to be in a situation where suddenly you recognize, I have a deficiency, then God will put you in a place where you don't have it so you will know you need it. Because if you don't know you need it, you'll never ask for it. It's, feel, it's good to me. Because if nobody would draw in that area, many times you won't recognize that you don't need it. So I got to know I need you, Lord. And he puts you in a situation where family can't help you. He puts you in a situation where your credit cards are out of balance. He puts you in a situation where there's no one that can ever help you but him. But you never have to call out on him like that, God am I. So what he does is let you go to the bottom in order to help you. Now, nobody will choose that path because that's a hurtful place. But he knows 
how to talk to you. He knows how to get your attention. He knows, amen, you're going to come back to your right mind like the prodigal son. When he had to come, right, don't my father have better, amen, living conditions than this? He'll let you see it so you'll want it. This is the man of life that calls you to thirst after him. And all of a sudden you say, I don't have it. I don't know how to do that. And it's frustrating because now they're asking something of you that you don't have. And that's right where God wants you to be. Because you would never thirst for what you don't know you need. So all of a sudden, you begin to recognize that, I'm going to give you some therapy. Can I give you some therapy? I'm going to help somebody. I know you're stuck right there, but you ain't saying it, but I know you're there. It's human nature to be there. But the challenge is how you called on him. Mm. So all of a sudden, you recognize that you need more than what you have. I come to church, but I recognize I need more than church. I raise my hands, but I recognize I need more than raising my hand. I sing with the praise team, but I recognize I need more than singing with the praise team. That's when the power begin to move when you recognize I need him more than any other thing in this world. It will never move as long as you think you got it together. Oh, it, it will only move when you recognize I need something that I don't have and I am deficient in that area of my life. I don't even know how to love. You know how many men have come up to me and told me, married men, that have told me I don't know how to be a husband. And their wife is looking for a husband. And they're frustrated. And she's frustrated. Why? Because it was never deposited. And I said, let me teach you. Let me teach you how to be a husband. Let me teach you how to be a father. Now, you're going to have to let me correct you now. Uh-oh, that's when the wheel come off the vehicle. Yeah, that's when the whole tire's scarring up 540. Because if you want to be taught how to be one, then I have to correct what you got a deficiency in. My wife taught me that. She said, you got to tell people what to do. I'm like, no, they're going to they watch me and figure this out. They're going to watch me. But, but, but when I turned around, they would eat ice cream. They would know where to be found. And I have to go back and retrieve them and say, what are you doing? And this is why some of you women are frustrated with your men because they don't know how to be one. Oh my God. Oh. Aren't you glad for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad that God got an answer for everything? Aren't you glad that God said, I will restore the years? So I'm just giving you some therapy. See, you will never get help until you say, I'm lacking. And as long as you point at other people and say, you're lacking, you're going to never get the help because your thirst for them won't help you. But when you can look at yourself and say, I am lacking, now you are moving into a place where God can begin to bless you. Now all of a sudden, you say, I didn't get what I needed to get when I was younger. Lord, is there any way I can get what I lost. Lord, I'm all grown up now, but, but there are some things that I didn't get that I have, should have gotten when I was growing up. And, and, and according to the world, they say it's too late. 
And what do I do now that everything's withdrawn out of me and no one is making no deposits in me and the time in my life where I should have gotten a deposit, the people that should have given it to me wasn't there. Lord, what can you do for me to straighten out my account? Lord, it's hard to walk with you when you're hungry. It's hard to walk with you when I'm hurting. Lord, it's hard to walk with you when I'm in need. Lord, what? Do I do? Lord, why do you want me to keep on walking with you? Because as you walk with me, I restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and what the locusts have eaten up. What you should have got when you was young, I'm going to restore it. What you should have got in your mama's house, I'm going to restore. What you should have got in your daddy's house, I'm going to restore. As you walk with me, I restore the years with the locusts, canker worm, and palmer worm having eaten up. I will give you back the very years that they have eaten up and devoured and destroyed. I will restore your soul. I will renew your mind. I will restore your health. As you walk with me, I will give back to you what was devoured in you. And everybody else is trying to take out of you, but God is always trying to put down inside of you. And people don't understand Dan, as you walk with him, he will give you back the things that you should have gotten at two and three and four and five years old. But your mama never gave it to you. Your daddy never gave it to you. And God said, as you walk with me, watch this now. I'm going to nurture you in my arms. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to strengthen you. And I'm going to nurture you. And I'm going to open doors for you. See, as you walk with me, I'm going to give you back what was lost. Now, I want to close with this story. It's a two-page story, so stay with me. In the Old Testament, there was a man named Mephibosheth. Now, Mephibosheth was the grandson of King Saul and the son of Jonathan. Now, when Mephibosheth was a baby, he was dropped to the floor when he was a baby. His nurse dropped him at the time that he was held in her arms. And she grossly crippled him, and he became a cripple for the rest of his life. He grew up a cripple. Does anybody know what it's like to grow up as a cripple? Oh my God. The older you are, the more crippled you become. The older you are, the incapacitated you become. When you are a child, you can get moved around pretty good. But when you become my size, it's hard to move somebody my size because I will put a limitation on you. And Mephibosheth went from being a crippled child to a crippled man. And when a child is crippled, when something is wrong with a child, whether it's rape or molestation or any kind of abuse, get this, they have all kinds of sympathy for when a child is a child. But the problem is when the child becomes an adult, then there is no compassion for him. <laughs> Stay with me now. You see, there are all kinds of funds for crippled children. But when you become an adult, there ain't no funds for you. And so as it is in the church, as it is in the spirit. And when you find children in the church, we run and minister to them. But we fail to realize that a crippled child grows up to be a crippled adult. And Mephibosheth went from a crippled child to a crippled adult. And the Bible says that he was now down there living in Lodabar. Oh, God. Can I tell the story, Jermaine? 
I wish I had a little time because all these words mean something. He was down there living in a place that had no green pastures. Lodabar is a dry place. And so he went, amen, from a king's palace. Now he's living down in Lodabar. Oh, glory to God. And King David told his servant Zippah, I want you to go down to Lodabar. And I like this word because I used to think it was some old country bumpkin word. I didn't, I didn't realize it was a biblical word. But the Bible says, Zippa, go down to Lodabar and fetch him out. Duh. I had to stop and not fetch. What's so important about, why are you emphasizing fetch? And here is Zippa. This grown man goes down to Lodabar to get Mephibosheth, who is now a grown cripple. Mm. Curved leg, swollen ankle, incapacitated man. Now, Zippa went down to Lodabar, picked him up, and fetched him out. You see, that's the goodness of the Lord right there. Is that when we are in trouble, he will come and fetch us out. He just don't call us out. Because he knows we're messed up. And if you call somebody who's crippled to come out, they can't come out. So he just don't call me out. God Almighty, he go fetch me out. He go down there where I'm living. He go down there where I'm incapacitated. He goes down where I'm sick. He goes down where I can't move. He goes down there where I'm stuck. Zipper, go down to Lodabar and fetch him out. And that's the problem. We're just preaching. When you just preach to people, they hear you, but they don't come out. So sometimes I got to come down and put my hands on your shoulder. And you think I'm just walking down the aisle because you're in my space, but I'm touching you for a reason. I'm touching you, amen, to get that spirit off. I'm touching you because you're stuck in a place. I'm touching you because something wrong in your life. I'm touching you because nobody sees the pain and the hurt. And, and you're crying out, but you're crying out silently. So David says, Zippa, go down there and fetch him out. And here's a grown man carrying a grown man. See, it's, it, it's simple if there was a baby. I could carry him out real easy and nobody know the difference. But when a grown person has to carry another grown person, everybody sees it. Woo. David sends Zipper down there to Lodabar to fetch him out. And here you have a grown man Carrying a grown man, bringing him out of load of bar, and he's got him on his shoulders, and he's carrying him like a bag of potatoes, bag of semen over his shoulders. And all of a sudden, Mephibosheth gets closer and closer to the palace. He fetched him out, and the Lord said, why? I'm asking this question. Why are you fetching him out? Then all of a sudden it made sense. Because that was the position he was in when he was dropped as a baby. And God had to take him all the way back for when he was dropped as a baby. This was the position you was in. So I'm going to take you all the way back and show you I restore the years. <laughs> I ain't going to leave you like she left you. I'm going to take you to the place where you're supposed to be in the first place. You are a king's child and you're living in a trash dump. I got to restore you. So I'm going to remember 
this is where you was first dropped. This is where you was first crippled. And I'm going to go back and get you and show you I didn't forget about you. Oh, anybody feel the love? Am I feeling compassion? Oh God, you're gonna go back and fetch me from the place I was crippled. I said I'd never go back there. They hurt me too bad. Have anybody ever got hurt in the church? The place where it should be the safest. And you said, if I ever get out of here. I never come back to church again. And you was in Lodabar for a season. But because God loves you so much, he sent a proverbial zipper down to Lodabar to fetch you out. Because I cannot let you stay there. And here, now get this now. So now God was with Mephibosheth in his last days giving him back something that he should have gotten in his early days. Look at somebody real quick and says, thank God for a second chance. Thank God for a second chance. I thought it was gone. I thought what I lost, I'll never get back again. I just chalked it up. I'll never see that again. But thank God he gave me a second chance. And God will give you a second chance. Everything you didn't get, God will make provisions that you do get it. So here is Mephibosheth. He's carried out a load of bar, nurtured in the arms which he was once dropped in. And every little step he took got him back a little closer to his destiny. Zippa didn't turn him loose until he got in the palace. Oh, you get that. Miles and miles, Zipper carried Mephibosheth and didn't let him go until he got back into his rightful position. God Almighty. Lord, I thank you for carrying me out. I couldn't even carry myself. I tried to carry myself out, but thank you for carrying me out. You picked me up in your arm and brought me out. You nurtured me. You fed me. You met my needs. As a matter of fact, you spoiled me. Some of the stuff, amen, I didn't get, you gave it back to me. I didn't deserve it, but you spoiled me. And here come Mephibosheth down into the palace, and all of a sudden, he is sitting amongst kings and priests, eating the same food that King David and his courts are eating. Yesterday, he was in Lodabar. Yesterday, he's broken. Yesterday, I chalk it up. I'm going to live with this cancer for the rest of my life. I'm going to live with this diabetes. He has chalked it up. But today, he's eating with kings and princes. Men and women of God, God is going to set you in a place. Now watch me. The other people had to work to get in. Oh, they had to cheat to get in. They had to fight and scrape to get in. But God, said, I'm going to place you in a. I'm going to put you up front in a place that you know had passed you by. God will bless you so good that people get jealous because you got blessed and they did. And they're trying to figure out how in the world did you get blessed that good when I did twice as much work as you did. Because when God start restoring, he gonna let your enemy see it. He ain't gonna let them move, he ain't gonna let them die. He's going to let your enemies see how good the Lord God Almighty is unto you. 
the ones that left you on the side of the road for dead, the ones that talked about you, the ones they made, I thought they stole something from you. God said, I'm going to parade them right back in front of you, and they're going to see how good you are. Zippa! Go get it. Go get it. Every little step you take gets you closer to the palace. Now, the only thing you have to focus on, my fellow chef, you can't focus on who dropped you now. You can't focus on what happened to you now. The only thing you have to focus on is clinging to the one who's carrying you. Mm, I cling to the old rugged cross. Cling to my safe. Cling to the lily of the valley. Cling to the bright and morning star. Cling to the wheel in the middle of a Cling to the comforter. Cling to the provider. That's the only thing you need to focus on this morning is cling to the one who is carrying you. Every yeah. head bowed and eyes are closed. Father, I thank you for restoring this body of believers. As I walk with you, you restore my soul. As, as I walk with you, you, you restore my health. As I walk with you, you take me from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Because every little step I take gets me closer to your purpose, God. We thank you. You saw me down in Lodabar. When I have, I just gave up. I gave up years ago. But you wouldn't let me stay there. So you came down and you fetched me out. To only to bring me back to where I was when I was a baby. So Lord, I submit myself to you. I'm going to cling to you. So, Father, first of all, I want to say thank you for getting me out of my load of bar. Thank you, Jesus. You're giving me a second chance. Thank you, Jesus, because now I can see the direction I'm supposed to go in. Now I can see what I was supposed to have. So I submit to you today. You're here and your hands are still bowed. Your hands are still bowed. You're here and God is speaking to you. He is speaking to you. Because you have been in a spiritual loader bar. But God wouldn't let you stay there. He messed with your mind. Months and months. And said, I can't let you stay here. Here's the button, eyes are closed. I want all those in that spiritual load of our place to get up out of your seat and meet me right now in this altar. But here's the bows and eyes are closed. All of you. God is on his throne. And now it's time. They say, Lord, I just want to thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I pray you are inspired to take your life to the next level. Now I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment and let me know how this bless you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you will never miss a video. I'll see you next time. God bless you.